Talking with the experts. Discover how neuroscience can elevate leadership, decision making and team dynamics in business in episode 568 with Carlos Davidovich. So we need to be very mindful and, and our will to be very high, I mean, to insist on that. But we do it for many other things in life. I mean, we work it demands from us a lot of focus, a lot of determination, a lot of discipline. So that, that's our life. In which direction you orient these kind of things, that is what makes the difference. And that is completely, this is a very important concept because it talks about accountability. That depends on you or on each of us. We cannot avoid and we need to stop blaming the outside or blaming others. Of course, all of us are exposed to different circumstances. Not nice, more complicated, more dramatic, more demanding. This is life. But there is something that nobody can take out from us can take away is our decision of how to react to that external situation. Talking with the experts. Welcome to Talking with the Experts. This is where we discuss great ideas to take your business to the next level. How do we know these ideas work? Well, it's because we're talking with business owners who are using these ideas. Business owners who have years of experience and expertise. All things business by business owners for business owners. And now, here is your host, Rose Davidson. Hello, welcome to Talking with the Experts. I'm your host, Rose Davidson from rosedavidson.com. Talking with the Experts is all about business by business owners for business owners. You can find it on all podcasting, streaming platforms and on YouTube. And today my guest is Carlos Davinovich and Davidovich, I beg your pardon. And um, Carlos is coming all the way from Spain today. And Carlos is going to be talking to us about why neuroscience in business. And Carlos, um, a little bit about him is he is an extensive, he has extensive experience supporting the development of leaders and management teams on an international scale. Carlos has been living and working between Europe, the US and Canada for over 20 years, where he has become an executive coach, giving workshops and lectures on neuromanagement, applying neuroscience in organisations and businesses. Currently, he resides in Madrid, working with clients from all sorts of cultures around the world. He is a professor of neuromanagement and uh, with clients from all sorts of cultures, uh, as I've explained to you previously. Um, he has a, 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 a co-authored book called Personality D- DNA, Discover Your True Personality. He is the author of Five Brain Leadership, How Neuroscience Can Help You Master Your Instincts and Build Better Teams. And in January of 2023, he was an international TEDx speaker. So welcome, Carlos. Thank you for joining me today. And um, I'm really interested to learn about why neuroscience in business. Thanks a lot, Rose, for the invitation. I'm delighted to be here in your podcast and to share with people, your your audience, uh, whatever, I mean, everything I'm working in because I'm, I'm, I'm a passionate guy in what I do and I love to share. <laughs> okay, so what got you into, into um, neuromanagement in the first place? A good question and the right answer is life. So I didn't expect it to be there, (laughs) but based on my background, being an MD, so I was working as MD, and also I I was in business for 20 years. So I, in that moment, I uh, figured out that I could bridge those two worlds in in, in a way to bring some information that was becoming through time more and more trendy. You know, everybody talks about the brain right now. Uh, but that was not uh, 10 or 15 years ago. and uh, But there was a lot of information coming from neuroscience that I started uh, understanding or figuring out that could be useful for leaders to know and then to learn a little bit in a more profound or scientifically support way 
where, how human behavior is and how it works. And then teams can develop better, people can develop in a better way. So I, I found there a niche that I thought was going to be uh, useful for people in business. That's why. But then again, today everybody talks about the brain, but it was not we were we were the 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 the, the pioneers on this. <laughs> yeah, no, and, and you know, the study of brain and and um and all of those things in in uh life and in business is can be quite interesting in, in that uh, you know it helps us to understand how processes and work within you know our, our life in general. Yeah, absolutely. This is, I mean, we talk about business because, of course, it's a topic and the, my clients mainly are in business, even though I work with non-profit organizations as well, like uh, the World Health Organization or similar. But in the end, it's about human behavior in whatever uh, scenario that you are involved in. So it's exactly the same. Yeah. It's I guess about life. So. Yeah, and the function of our brains is different for each person. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. we can't all be the same, otherwise the world would be totally boring. Um, but, you know, how can we, I guess, um, work our businesses around the fact that, you know, we are so different and that each person thinks so differently about, you know, what we offer them? So let's put it in this way. Uh, first of all, it's not about to talk about deep, basic science. That's not the purpose uh, at all. This is to make it uh, handy, let's say, or user-friendly, and mainly to understand what tools do we have through how our brain works. And then, at in the end, is how you deal with it. So you were uh, right, Rose, that we are all different. I will say we are all different in the way we use the tools, but we have the same tools. So we have the same characteristics or the same uh, yeah, behavioral traits, let's say, the basic one. The way you combine them, the way you can express those characteristics in the way you relate with people, that is your choice. And but again, and, and and being respectful of people, there are not too many people that are aware of that. And therefore, no, I they are not really in control. They are dominated, if you like to use the word, by their own instinct, uh, reptilian brain, survival mode, blah, 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 blah. That has consequences in the way you deal with others. Mm. And if we can understand that we can be in control, that we can really uh, dominate our own self, and I don't want to go to the old cliche that know yourself, but but kind of kind of in that line, it's amazing how you can make a difference in the way you leverage people, you leverage yourself, you move forward in your life. The career is part of your life. Yeah. So Makes sense? We, yeah, absolutely. And how can we use the skills that we've learned <clears throat> to, you know, um, use our brains more effectively? First of all, we need to understand that, and I like to introduce the concept, it's not mine. In business, we talked all the time about time management, and it's a completely wrong target. Absolutely nobody manage time. What we do all the time, 24-7, is managing energy. And this is not a touchy-feely concept. This is a fact. Even though there is a medical word for that called allostasis, that is how you manage energy, to make it simple. And I feel tired, I do less. I feel with energy, I do more. That's it, period. If we can learn the basic rules of how that energy goes inside and outside myself, de definitely I can be more productive, more efficient. I can take a lot of more advantage of how my brain works. And then again, I'm in control. 
and not depending on the outside world that is very influential, don't get me wrong, <laughs> on us. But then, then I can really, let's put it this way, Rose. Here, we can, we have a, who is in charge of the dashboard? You know, all the characteristics of our brain. We can be in charge. And that, I, 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 in a funny way, I fight against the concept of soft skills. Those are normally named as soft skills are completely wrong. They are the strong skills, the most difficult ones to deal with. And those are the ones that determine the business, the connection with your customer, the connection with your team, the connection with your boss. So how can you call them soft? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I know. I, I, I've never liked that word soft skills. I think um, yeah. skills are skills. It doesn't matter. You, you know, they're not soft or hard. They're skills that you have learned and, and use every single day. So I agree that I, yeah, I don't like that term um, at all. So I guess... Um, how can we maybe or can we ch um, change our neuro neuro pathways to you know become be better business leaders? Great question, Rose. Uh, I will use. I mean, the 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 key word on this concept is neuroplasticity, and that's something that we didn't know when I studied medicine many years ago. I mean, we didn't know about that word. I mean, a few years ago, a guy, I mean, it was a woman, by the way, she found out about that the brain is changing all the time. There was a group of people. Changing all the time means because the old, uh, I would say, assumption, the old assumption was the brain is fixed. So uh, we developed our brain until we are 10 years old. And then was just a downhill process, very depressing, by the way. So, and that is completely wrong. The brain is permanently changing. So again, the question is, can I lead my own changes in my brain? The answer is a huge yes. I can determine in which direction I can go, you know, I mean, regarding habits, regarding behavior, regarding way to connect with people, each of those characteristics has a pathway in the brain, has a mark. Those marks will stay there if I repeat the pattern. At the moment I stop doing that, of course, the brain says, we are not using this, just forget it. That also brings the concept that I can change habit, the answer is yes. Is it easy? The answer is no. So we need to be very mindful and, and our will to be very high, I mean, to insist on that. But we do it for many other things in life. I mean, we work it demands from us a lot of focus, a lot of determination, a lot of discipline. So that, that's our life. In which direction you orient these kind of things, that is what makes the difference. And that is completely, this is a very important concept because it talks about accountability. That depends on you or on each of us. We cannot avoid and we need to stop blaming the outside or blaming others. Of course, all of us are exposed to different circumstances. Not nice, more complicated, more dramatic, more demanding. This is life. But I will bring, not exactly literally, but the quote, you know, of, of uh, Viktor Frankl, that was the, the psychiatrist from Vienna, you know, that he said, I mean, everything, everything can be taken from us. So can, we, we can go through the most worst experience in life. In his case was the concentration camp. But there is something that nobody can take out from us, can take away, is our decision on how to react to that external situation. And that applies in business. So stop, even though I coach, I coach a lot of leaders, and, and of course, my, my people come claiming, I'm, I'm blaming, I'm, I'm complaining. Okay, first of all, rule number one is stop complaining. Compla Why? Because it's unproductive. Complain will fix your brain in one place 
that is not connected with solutions. Then you need to know where to put your brain, how to tune or fine tune your brain to put it in a place. So to activate that area that will bring solutions. And then I said, rule number one, no complaints anymore. Proposals of solution is the way. I don't want to go all over the places, but just to show you that there is a way to program ourselves in a positive, in a productive way or in a non-productive way. <laughs> and we can do it. Makes a lot of sense, Carlos. So, you know, I mean, you're right. Um, when we complain about something, it makes us feel less than and we don't feel as good about what's going on in the world when we're continually complaining about stuff. And, you know, if you've, if you're with someone that's continually complaining, it makes makes you feel, I don't know, sad or angry or, you know, not as productive if, if someone that you know is constantly complaining about something because they're not being positive. They're not using, you know, positivity to, you're right, find their solution to the problem that they're complaining about. So it's a negative emotion. It's, I, I like to say because, again, again, many people are reacting to negative or positive, you know, even though it's true. I say it's an unproductive emotion. It's an emotion that will take you to nowhere. Whatever situation that you start, you, me, or everyone, start playing victim that is complaining, let's say, when you complain, you, you feel bit. So because you are blaming that somebody or something outside is, uh, is harming you, affecting you, is blocking you, whatever. So then you don't have any power because you are just putting all the power outside. In that moment, you are trapped. But you are trapped by yourself, <laughs> not by the situation. So I'm, I'm, fascin I'm fascinated to see so many people please in the world. That's why the world was evolving because in the balance, there are more positive thinkers than negative thinkers. Uh, how, how people can find solutions, how people can be creative, how people can, can understand that uh, there is a way. I, I love the saying in English, even though it's not my native language, that when there is a will, there is a way. I'm so convinced about it. And I saw it so many, I saw it so many times. Yeah. So many times. And people that say, gosh, there is a way. Because always there is a way. <laughs> yeah, there's always a solution to every problem. Absolutely. More yeah. complicated, less complicated, more costly, less costly. But there is a way. There is. So why are my emotions so cr um, crucial to our decision-making process then, Carlos? because they are the only one involved in a decision-making process. They are leading the decision-making process. Another wrong assumption that we love to have, because it's one, one of the key topics I deal with leaders. Now, I'm a very rational in my decision, and I start laughing with all respect, <laughs> because the brain cannot make 100% rational decisions. The brain, our human brain is not prepared for that. 80, 80, 80 percent of the inputs, more than 80, that we receive comes from emotions and instinct, not from the rational side. Don't get me wrong. We need the rational side to do the analysis, the analytical thinking, to the situation. But at the moment that we arrive to we did all the analytical analysis. It's like a, we need to give that information to our emotions. And the emotions will decide what to do. Not the rational brain. And it's so funny because everybody says, no, no, my decision was... Rah, rah, rah. And then I start, of course, already I know after so many years how to show them that they are totally wrong. That the decisions were 100% emotional. For good or for bad, it's, it's not the point. The, you know, Rose, what is the... <laughs> What is the, 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 the downside? That the word emotional has a negative marketing worldwide. We use the word emotional in a negative way. When we say to someone, you are emotional, we say you are not in control, right? That is wrong. This is one type of behavior. But the truth is that emotions is the main fuel that is fueling, let's say, 
every single decision. There's no other way. Therefore, we need to be mindful of that, number one. And number two, we need to understand our emotions and to learn how to deal with it. Yeah, what about if people that are, you know have been uh, labelled as um, less emotionally intelligent? Uh, you know, how does that play into you know having a business or even in your personal life? Because the emotional intelligence is is a word that's is a phrase that's being bandied around at the moment. Uh, yeah, another another very trendy word, EQ. No, I mean the emotional intelligence. Let's. I will give you one example to understand this. Most of the cases, and I'm generalizing now, Rose, people that brag about being 100% Russian and I'm very, you know, there is a huge fear behind that. And a fear to feel vulnerable or to feel out of control. Again, there is emotion feeling that attitude of being called it's a defense mechanism i don't want to get into psychology or into deep <laughs> psychological thing and i will give you another tip the way how the brain works regarding the different uh neural pathway when we activate the analytical thinking rational mind we deactivate the empathetic side. We cannot be empathetic and deeply analytical. So the brain does like this because they are in different parts of the brain and they compete all the time. A highly rational people that only, you know, analytical, highly, they cannot be empathetic. They cannot feel what people feel. Therefore, they cannot understand others. And this is a quite safe place. <laughs> because then I'm not influenced by any emotion and I, I am avoiding dealing with mine because I don't know how to do it. That's the truth. So what I'm trying to say is even those called very low EQ behind, in most cases, is a defense mechanism fed by fears I, just to, to close the circle <laughs> of course i cannot tell these rows directly in their face because they will say i don't talk to you anymore because i'm uncover something that is quite painful many times so we go there when i coach my my, my clients little by little and then try to empower them on how to deal with their own emotions to be able to accept others' emotion. I don't know if I'm responding to your question, Rose. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, and, you know, we have to, as humans, be able to deal with others and not emotions because, um, you know, some if someone's quite angry, you've got to be able to deal with that in a positive way and yeah. and not get caught up in the moment and, and you become angry as well um, because it's counterproductive. Absolutely, absolutely. And certain emotions are contagious. The most primitive emotion, the one that you said when somebody's angry, that normally is activated by the survival mechanism. So I win, I, I need to kill or I will be killed, <laughs> I will die. Those ones are very contagious. That will awake the similar emotions on others. Therefore, I need to be aware of my own emotions and not and stop reacting in a negative way. Yeah, and sometimes it's quite difficult. I mean, you know, most of the time, I know, and you have a client who may get angry with you for some small slight that they that they feel that that you've committed against them or or against the process or whatever. And you know, you as the business owner, you've got to try and keep your emotions in check so that you're not escalating an angry situation. The most, I would say, the cleverest things, cleverest things to do many times is to stop 
that conversation in a kind way, I mean, in a polite way, and to offer to talk in any other time. Because to go to put that person back to the normal place, not reactive or not angry, is very difficult. It, and it's quite personal. It takes different time for people. It takes a very long time. If I can be in control and not and avoid reacting in the same way, the best is to say, listen, I think that this conversation is not helping. And I think that the best is, or oh, let's go for a drink, or oh, let's meet tomorrow, or oh, let's meet in a couple hours. Showing, acknowledging the situation. So I see that you're very angry. I understand your anger. I cannot offer a solution now. Let's, let's talk later. So acknowledging the situation and offer another time to keep this conversation because we'll take to a wrong place yeah. with yeah, consequences. I yeah, I agree with that. That's a, a great way of handling any sort of crisis like that. Now, what is communication really, Carlos? What, what is it that we do that, you know, activates this communication skill that we all are supposed to have? There is a basic rule that not too many people know. The real definition of communication is speaking the other person's language, no mine. If we can understand that basic concept, everything changed in my mindset. To communicate, because normally, we, all of us, I include myself in a group, we, com we, we make the same mistake. To communicate the best in a personal life, in a working life, I show the best side of me. And many times, it's not the best side of the other person we like to hear. <laughs> and I'm not listening. Communication is not about me. This is a basic concept. Communication is listening. What is the language, the emotional language of the other person and try to Talk, speak in that language. The best example is what's going on right now between you and me. Carlos, if I would like to be the best version of Carlos now, with jokes, with the, the word use with the language, I will speak Spanish. I will not speak English. That's my language. Communicate, I will feel great. Communication zero. And your your audience will say, What is this guy talking about? Make sense? So yep. I need I need to speak English because the only way that I need to speak your language. Yeah. And to yep. learn how to express myself. I, I'm still myself, don't get me wrong. I'm still is myself in the way I talk, in the way I the word, I, but the vehicle is yours, not mine. Mm. It's a lot of sense, actually. Yeah, I think um I have heard of other uh, coaches, you know, saying that you need to learn the language of the person that you're speaking to. And sometimes exactly. that takes a bit of effort. But I think if you use your listening skills, um, then, you know, you should be able to pick it up fairly quickly. Absolutely. There are, there are certain patterns. Again, neuroscience can help on that. Mm -hmm. They are basic pattern of communication styles. And those are very easy to pick if you know them and you pay attention to the first sentence, yeah. or you ask the right questions. There are questions to ask, and then you will identify what is the dominant basic personality style. And if you can speak in that language, that says communication is there. Absolutely, yep, great tip, Carlos. Thank you for sharing that. Now you can find Carlos on LinkedIn, and you can also find him on his website at carlosdavidovich.com. And I just want to discuss about your books um, that you have written, um, The Personality DNA, um, Discover mm -hmm. Your True Personality, and Five Brain Leadership, How Neuroscience Can Help You Master Your Instincts and Build Better Teams. Where can these books be found, Carlos? And, and Everywhere. In them? Everywhere in the world. So, of course, Amazon, of course, and any local, let's say, some countries, they have their own Amazon-like <laughs> place in Canada is Indigo or whatever, or, or in the United States there are others, and Australia I means different. So what I'm trying to say is, uh, it's all over the places because that's the way we 
we arranged with the with the company. So you can find it, just five brain leaderships, Carlos Davidovich and we'll just pop up and everywhere. Wonderful, wonderful. Carlos, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for sharing your knowledge with us today. And I look forward to having a further conversation perhaps next year. Anytime. We would be delighted to talk to you again. You've been listening to Talking with the Experts, hosted by Rose Davidson. Make sure you have a look at our back catalogue over at talkingwiththeexperts.com and be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss out on any episode. We look forward to your company next time.